Hello everybody. So I wanted to upload this video today where it is the edited version of a four part video series that I show my research and investigation into the European Space Agency's mission to catch a comet and highlight the symbolism that ties right back into ancient Egypt, Isis, Osiris, and some of the coincidental similarities that show up and take place throughout this mission and what it kind of all means. I think it's a fascinating investigation. If you stick through the whole thing, the last image that is sent back from the Osiris camera on this comet is quite remarkable. So I wanted to at least give you this is one longer version that I kind of cleaned up and edited it and put it into a format that is a little better suited. So let's just get right into it. Okay, everybody. So I'm pretty excited to do my first ever screencast and talk about a subject that I've been researching and give you the visuals that will allow you to kind of step into my research and what I've been putting together and get your feedback and your thoughts on this uh, specific mission that the European Space Agency conducted. So one of the things that we constantly see is a repeating pattern is the Roman Greco, uh, the Greek, the Egyptian symbolism, titles, names, dates associated with the various missions that NASA engages in. And the European Space Agency being the counterpart to our NASA program, uh, they're doing the same thing. And they've done it in this mission, which was the mission to catch a comet, the first ever attempt to land on a comet and take samples and do some scientific research. So what I want to know is, do you think that this is coincidental, the things that I'm going to show you? Is it by design? Is there something nefarious going on? Is it all 100% deceit? What is really taking place in uh, with this mission? And we're going to cover a lot of information. I'm going to do this in at least two parts. Uh, the second part of this will really look at the ancient Egyptian festival calendar and the days of this mission, some of their milestones and what, how that, how that corresponds with the ancient Egyptian calendar. What is the story that is being told subconsciously in this mission? So for those that don't know, the European Space Agency uh, back in 2004 decided to launch a, an orbiter called the Rosetta Orbiter, which was carrying various uh, scientific instruments and, and things. One of which it was carrying is the Philae lander and uh, the OSIRIS camera. And we're going to get in a little more detail what those things are. But basically, in 19... 67 I believe it is 1969 I'm sorry Comet 67P was discovered and here it shows I guess from a from a telescope this object hurling out in space um, you know the comet is also you can take that word in the etymology of it means long-haired star and so that's everybody knows the iconic image of a comet streaking across the sky and its long tail so this was the european space agency's attempt to reach out and actually land on this object um they sent out this is an artist's rendition of the satellite that they sent out. You know, it's interesting that this spacecraft, 
let's just work look at the word spacecraft itself you know craft being the making of you know it's a it's a hands-on um, it's a hands-on verb so to say and you know space being you know our concept of you know the universe and so it's the creating of space I, I really think it's the creating of this concept of space in the human consciousness is this craft that they are engaging in just like you would have witchcraft you have spacecraft and so they are engaging in the deception of spacecraft um and what they are showing in an artist's rendition is this satellite, the Rosetta Orbiter. Uh, it's interesting that its shape, if you just look at that, is very similar to ancient Egyptian goddess Nut, mother of Osiris. And then you get a lot of Isis goddess symbolism that gets adopted and so i don't think it's a stretch of the imagination to see the similarities especially the wings were powered in by the sun of the egyptian goddess so we get both symbolism right off of the bat with it and what we are told is that this satellite which was named after the rosetta stone a stone slab found in 1799 uh, near rosetta it bared parallel inscriptions in the G greek and egyptian hieroglyphic and demoted characters making possible the decipherment of ancient egyptian hieroglyphs it acted as a clue and it, and it was really a breakthrough and discovery that provided crucial knowledge for solving uh, the decipherment of Egyptian hieroglyphs. Um, the Philae Lander was named after the Philae Oblis, which was on the island of Philae, and we're going to look at that island and what was on it and the shape of it and kind of uh, decode and deconstruct the symbolism there. Uh, the Philae lander descended from a distance of 14 miles to the surface of this comet. And we should know that 14 is a direct uh, connection to the 14 pieces of Osiris that Isis had to find and reassemble. So we'll see 14. Another time 14 shows up is the actual size of this comet. It is said to be approximately 2.7 by 2.3 miles in size. And if you just took and added 2 plus 7 plus 2 plus 3, you will get to 14. So again, the 14 members of Osiris are encoded in the actual size of this comet. It's interesting that various artists renditions show stars where others do not and none of the pictures that came back from this mission show stars in the background just as a interesting fact so here's the rosetta stone here's what the what the orbiter was named after and the rosetta stone symbolizing a you know an object that will allow us to decipher and understand a, a greater subject and that's what i think that they're doing within this mission is another uh, subliminal message in connection with the rosetta stone was the phile obelisk the phile obelisk also had both greek and egyptian inscriptions they didn't define one another but they basically told the same story and uh, so it's very interesting 
that we start off automatically with the Greek and Egyptian symbolism into this mission. Again, the shape and approximate size. This gives you a good idea of the shape of this comet in relation to a mountain or say a city. I find it fascinating that they were able to land on something that this object of this size is generating enough gravity for the lander to stay on the surface as this thing is zipping and flying through the vacuum of space. Again, another picture and image of this comet. The lander. And the Philae obelisk. Now, this obelisk is now in Europe, but it was originally located on the Philae island. This island had a temple complex, and this is where the center of Isis worship was taking place in Egypt. This island is in the Nile. What happened was when the Aswan Dam was built, after it was built, this island would flood a couple times throughout the year and so eventually I believe a, a Nesco had a had a mission to relocate the temple structure and it now sits on this other island a Gil Lakai which if we go back to that first slide I showed you a Gila Kia ends up being the landing site. It's what they named where the Phi Li lander lands. Now, for those that uh, are already ahead of me here on uh, the shape and size of things, find it quite coincidental that in 1969, this comet was discovered and 45 years later, when they get this image, lo and behold it actually looks like the island that the lander is named after i don't even know how to put a statistical like what the probability of that actually taking place would have to be and it is fascinating that if this was really the case this was true why is none of the space agencies talking about what a coincidence this was how you know amazing that this you know here we we come up to this comet and there's an actual direct connection to the shape and the name in which the lander that is going to actually land and stay for all eternity on this object looks like the ancient island of flight and what did this island house? House the temple complex to Isis. Okay, so we've got Isis. Where where does Osiris fit into this picture? Well, the camera that was on board the orbiter was called the Osiris camera. It stood for Optical Spectroscopic Infrared Remote Imaging System, the acronym Osiris. They identify Osiris with the all-seeing eye and that's where they use that acronym as a way to describe this scientific camera so we now have the Osiris Isis connection um, here's the Trinity you know here's some little images that represent the this Trinity in ancient Egyptian um, mythology of Osiris, Isis, and Horus. Again, we got the image of Osiris and then Osiris again holding a Dijed, which we're going to talk about the Dijed when we get into the ancient Egyptian calendar. The direct connection of this object, what it represents and how it's connected to Osiris. Um, 
this column, the Dejed. Uh, now to recap for those that need to understand, you know, what takes place in the mythology of Osiris. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. It is it is this rebirth that is taking place and it's depicted in so much of what NASA is doing. And we get this story in the timeline that takes that that takes place between March 2nd of 2004 when Rosetta is launched and all the way into 2017 when the final image from the Osiris camera is sent back to Earth. And it's fascinating that story between the two. So one of the things that I came across in this research was the dates of the dates and times of the milestones of this mission and how they correlated with the ancient Egyptian festival calendar. And maybe this is just pure coincidence. I think there's more to it than that. I think that they are following a pattern, that they are paying homage, that they are worshiping not only Isis and Osiris, but they are worshiping these deities through the deception of space and the spacecraft that they are engaging in. So what we are going to do is look at some of this symbolism. So to start off with, if you go to the European Space Agency's website, they are going to give this as their milestones, really the dates that they want to highlight that made a difference through this space uh, mission. Uh, it's interesting that if you count the dates, we end up with 14. <laughs> Again, 14 members of Osiris, we're going to get the 14 members in the milestones that they're going to actually uh, highlight in this mission so to start off with you know what we are going to look at is the orbits that are supposedly taking place around the sun giving us this heliocentric model as the orbiter picks up speed and is cast out into the solar system to catch up with this comet and orbit it, land on it, and stay there to, to this day. So one of the things that I hope uh, you guys understand if you don't already know this is that when conducting magic, doing magic rituals, and even doing masonry, one of the important aspects of it are these things called magic circles. And traditionally, circles were believed by ritual magicians to form a protective barrier between themselves and what they summoned. In modern times, practitioners generally cast magic circles to contain and concentrate the energy they raise during a ritual. There are many published techniques for casting a circle, and many groups and individuals have their own unique methods. The common feature of these practices is that a boundary is traced around the working area. Some witchcraft traditions say that one must trace around the circle three times. There is a variation over which direction one should start in. The key is the three times. So to start off with, within the mission, the orbiter makes three orbits, three rotations around the sun. So on March 2nd, 2004, Rosetta is launched. That happens to be the day on the Egyptian calendar that coincides with the going forth of Set, son of Nut, Newt, who is the mother of Isis. And Set, or Seth, I'm gonna say it is Set, is the brother who murdered his brother Osiris 
and we get into that with some of the mythology and go into a little deeper study but a set is viewed as the dark is the evil one son of newt the egyptian god symbol which is very symbolic of the actual orbiter itself with the solar powered wings uh, extended and uh, so we start off with this mission automatically with the going forth of set so the go going forth of set is really the murder of osiris it's the death of osiris we're starting off with the death of osiris and what set did was not only did he murder osiris but he cast his body parts or he divided his body parts up into 14 pieces and distributed them and so we start off this mission automatically with the death of osiris then on march 4th 2005 we get the first earth flyby which coincides with the feast of Ra in his barge at heliopolis which is a sun powered barge that Ra travels on to the city of the sun the center of really the horse cult and heliocentric worship so we're starting this whole mission and ritual work with the death of osiris and then Ra going to the sun city and so as this orbiter is orbiting the sun we're getting layers of symbolism in both of it um then on november 13th the second earth flyby takes place and that coincides with isis grieving the loss of osiris and this image here i've talked about in some of my other videos when it as it relates to masonry is one of the images that were shown in the third degree of the death burial and resurrection of Hiram Abiff is really the death resurrection of Osiris and we're shown this symbol or we're shown this image which is supposed to be the weeping widow uh, weeping oh with a sprig of acacia over the broken column with father time behind her but what this really is is this is isis weeping over the broken column of osiris represented not only in the column but with the sprig of acacia and this is horus consoling her behind her so there are layers to just this image itself but within uh, this mission taking place on november 13 2009 isis grieves the loss of osiris uh i'm sorry i said november 13 2007 so then on september 5th 2008 we get a flyby of asteroid 2867 and this is where it starts to get interesting it's funny that if you actually take two eight six seven two plus eight plus six plus seven we get to 14 again the 14 members of osiris and to take it a little bit further let's just look at the etymology of the word asteroid you know asteroid really is a star like astarte the moon goddess um, Ishtar, Easter, the celebration of fertility and sex. Ishtar being the wife of Baal, the, Sumer the Sumerian goddess, queen of heaven, fertility goddess, associated with Ashira. Um, Ashira being a Canaanite goddess whose object that associates her would be a wooden pillar very very similar when we see the wooden pillar to the Dijad that we're going to talk about which correlates with Osiris one of the things within the Bible is that Hezekiah actually 
removed all the high places and sacred stones and cut down Asherah poles. He also broke the bronze serpent the Israelites had been worshiping. He did right in the eyes of the Lord and was able to take back the territory and kingdoms his father had lost. Hezekiah restored the Passover and invited the tribes. He destroyed the poles, the images, the objects of Asherah, Astarte, Ishtar, really the meaning of asteroid. So when we see asteroid 2867, which also has a relation to 14, the members of Osiris, you know, coincidence maybe, but uh, it's, I find it interesting that it fits with the narrative that I'm talking about. So one of the things that takes place on September 5th, 2008, which is when they flew by this asteroid, was the ceremony of raising the Dejed pillar. And that's what we see in this image here. And the Dejed represented Osiris. Isis raised the Dejed to honor and represent Osiris. And if you go further into the story, it really is the story of where Osiris was killed and then this coffin that came to shore, a tree grew in the place of Osiris's death and that tree was cut down by a king and Osiris had talked and then Isis had convinced the king to give her the tree because that's where the body of Osiris was being held and so this tree that was cut down and then resurrected again to to pay tribute to becomes this wooden dejed just like we get the wooden image for Ishtar for Asherah there is a direct connection back to this mythology I think it goes a little bit deeper into what this technology might produce as far as the resurrection of Osiris. On November 13th, 2009, this also coincides with the Egyptian calendar, festival calendar of Isis grieving the loss of Osiris. And so again, we will get this image of Isis uh, weeping over the broken column of Osiris holding the sprig of acacia, being consoled by Father Time slash Horus. And we get this image in masonry in the third degree where we are told uh, that this represents the our mortality and we're given a description of this image that is not actually accurate but when you go into the scottish rite and you go into a little bit deeper study specifically in morals and dogma you understand what this actual image represents so to move on from the actual third flyby so just to kind of go back to the original point of the procession of this orbiter it is three times going around and making a circle it is creating the magic circle for this ritual to take place um, three times around the sun heliocentric worship and validation three times being presented to earth uh, very very specific in the symbolism when it comes to magic and even within masonry and then from there the orbiter is sent out to catch up and actually orbit and land on this comet so Let's pick back up where we left off, which would have been 
now January 20th 2014 where there is an exit of deep space hibernation and it actually corresponds with the going forth of Anubis the festival of jubilation for Osiris in Bersiris which happens to be the birthplace of Osiris and for those that don't know Anubis a protection god kind of was looked at as a son of Osiris with Nephthys the sister-in-law of Osiris who embalmed Osiris after his death in reassembly Osiris returns to his birthplace a celebration where offerings are given to the deceased and that is what's taking place on January 20th of the year and the next milestone for this mission will be in August where the Rosetta orbiter actually reaches Comet 67P and when it does on that date it coincides with the festival of Newt and Ra and the chief festival of Toth representing the birth and rebirth newt mother of isis and osiris goddess of the sky winged goddess like the solar panels of the rosetta probe formed the skies and heavens and birthed the stars originally the goddess of the night sky depicted as a cow spread out like the firmament over the earth toth the god of the moon very very interesting then on November 12th 2014 Phi Lee lands the Phi Lee lander lands on Comet 67P and that date coincides with Isis seeking the body of Osiris now, just as a side note for those of you that think that or that are questioning that the festival calendar of the ancient Egyptians might be specific to the Isis and Osiris mythology it is not the Isis and Osiris mythology is a very very small portion of that overall festival calendar the festival calendar covers a lot of mythology what's interesting is that this mission to catch a comet pulls on exactly the dates that coincide with isis and osiris so you can chalk it up to being just uh, coincidental or you can see this as a pattern and uh, there being an underlying subliminal subconscious message that we are being shown in the dates times names and overall symbolism of this mission so we left off on november 12 2014 the lander lands on the comet that represents isis seeking the body of osiris and it takes us right into the August 13th, 2015 date, which is when not only does the comet, but the comet and the lander and the orbiter actually make the closest approach to the sun. So if you see on this graph, you know, as this comet is actually making its orbit and precession around the sun as it gets to its closest point here is where on august 13 2015 the comet and the lander and the orbiter are at the closest position to the sun which happens to be also the day of battle between Horus 
and set uh, and is where Isis gains the horns of Hathor. Horus avenges the murder of Osiris by Set and Isis puts on the cow's horns with the sun disk between them. And you see that symbolism very clearly in um, the rest of the symbolism of the satellite in the satellite dish that sits uh, crowned above the actual orbiter. So as we get to the end of the, the milestones and dates of this entire mission, we come to September 28th which is the final image reported from the Osiris camera and on the 28th of September that happens to also be the day that on the Egyptian calendar that Osiris goes forth from Abydus it represents the purification of the hearts of Net Jiru feast of happy creating of the Nile in a Bidus, seat of the god Osiris, portal temple that opens to the underworld, is a favorite burial place of the pharaohs and a cult center for Osiris, meaning Hellas Point. And if we kind of recap everything that we've been looking at, we've started with the death, the burial, and really the resurrection not necessarily the resurrection but the rebirth of osiris and bringing us back to the point of um right now where osiris enters the portal to the underworld and i'll kind of bring this all full circle where we get to the actual birthplace of osiris but within this september 28th uh symbology we get the actual um we did get the battle of horus and set which we see here leading us into isis receiving the horns of hathor which that's what you always see is a headdress to isis and we get this symbolism symbolism in a lot of the hieroglyphics of the Egyptian mythology. Isis with Horus, also known as Semiramis with Tammuz. The mystery of Osiris. Here would be the the actual location for this burial place the center of osiris the hellas point uh, abydus and then to take us back to the very very beginning if we understand the story so the Rosetta orbiter orbits this comet, sends down the lander. The lander goes to a location that they name Agilakia, which is the island Agilakia in the Nile, where the temple complex of Phile was relocated. On September 30th, 2017 I believe I believe that is when they actually canceled this program or this mission and they took the orbiter and crashed it into the comet itself when they did that the location that they crashed it into they called SIS, S-I-A-S. SIS on the comet is where they are going to leave not only the orbiter, 
but the Osiris camera. SACE also happens to be the location where Herodotus wrote that SACE is where the grave of Osiris is located. Plucart said that the shrine to Athena, which identifies with Isis, is in SACE and carried the inscription, I am all that hath been and is and shall be and my veil no mortal has here to raise this is the last image that the osiris camera took it might be a stretch of the imagination but that looks pretty phallic to me given all of the other evidence that goes with this mission and knowing what Osiris and the phallic symbolism that takes place for this to be the last image that comes back from this camera this is not coincidental this is this heads into a category of absolutely improbable one of the other things that they deposited on this uh, comet was a nickel disc that had over a thousand languages inscribed on it microscopically this is a wearable version of that disc and i find it interesting that if you understand the whole mythology and story of osiris and nimrod and nimrod being the person who was going to overthrow God in heaven via the Tower of Babel. Uh, it was God that had to confound the language. And so symbolically, the European Space Agency is giving back the language in a sense. They are depositing it back into space kind of saying here you go god we're giving you back what you did we're showing you now that we've been able to take all the languages of the world and overcome what you confounded at the tower of babel that's really what i take from this um also within that actual inscription when you read i am all that hath been and is and shall be in my veil to no mortal has hitherto raised it's very very interesting to compare revelation 1 8 to revelation 17 8 and in revelation 1 8 now i'm going to read from the at sefer bible and the way that reads now one of the things about the at sefer bible is it restores the actual name of god so that is how I'm going to read this. And it says, I am the Aleph and the Tab, the beginning and the end, says Yahuwah Elohim, which is and which was and which is to come. Yahuwah Sevaoth. Now, the Antichrist is a dark reflection of Christ. It's a reflection all the same. And so in Revelation 17 when talking about the Antichrist it says the beast that you saw was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the sephir of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is it's really interesting that we see within the very first uh, words describing the beast, the beast that you saw was. The word saw and the word was are a reflection of one another, S-A-W-W-A-S. I think that it's it's a clue letting us know right away this reflection that's taking place 
And it's just another thing that we can put on the pile of, uh, or the strand that we can add to this, uh, to this investigation on this subject matter, that there is a clear reflection to the beast in Revelation as it is to a reflection of Christ. And then even an inscription to a shrine that is identified with Isis that says basically the same thing that I am that hath been and is and shall be. Elohim says, I am which is and which was and which is to come. The Antichrist says that was and is not and yet is. So it's a very interesting way to end this research in this subject, this investigation, really diving into the subject matter. Let me give a recap of the last three sections that I did of this Rosetta Lander, the Phi uh, or I should say the Rosetta Orbiter, the Phi Lander, the Osiris Camera on Comet 67P. Do I, what, what do I think this really means when you look at it, you know, all together? What I think that the European Space Agency is doing is they are conducting a ritual. They are showing us that they are paying homage to these gods and goddesses that they are worshiping that this is a complete load of crap as far as the believability that they are actually circling the sun three times catapulting themselves out to an asteroid in the solar system where they are landing on it holy crap this is the biggest load of shat that you can come up with if you think for a second that they are actually going to make contact with a comet that's traveling i think somewhere around 34,000 miles an hour and orbit it that this object that is really not bigger than a mountain range has the gravitational pull to actually hold a lander and an orbiter to its surface as it's spinning and rotating and flying through the vacuum of space that there is an a or that right now there is an orbiter and a lander stuck to the surface of an object that's only about 2.3 slash 2.7 you know somewhere under three miles by under three miles uh length and width that that is enough mass to hold an object to its surface you're out of your freaking ever loving mind this is the they are mocking us and the best part of it all is the shape of the comet is the same shape as the island of Phi Lee that they named the lander after I mean, come on, people. Like I, like, I believe in coincidence. I've just never seen it. And this is, it's mocking us. If you think that this is true, I've got some beachfront property in Michigan that I'd like to sell you. You are an effing idiot, is what it boils down to. You really need to, like, go back and understand what critical thinking is is this is not something that is going to be coincidental this is not going to take place this is on the same same level is there is no way that nasa is going to send an orbiter out into the solar system to finally take a picture of the planet pluto and when they do you can actually see the shape 
of the Disney character Pluto imposed on the actual planet or the object that's been declassified as a planet Pluto. So you have to come to the conclusion either that the whole thing is bullcrap or that NASA or the European Space Agency are conducting a campaign to actually deceive you that they're actually mocking you in the sense that they're going to edit in they're going to cgi in they're going to change and and actually adjust images to reflect these things like the disney character pluto on pluto or that the shape of the comet will actually resemble the shape of the island Philae. Either way, they're conducting deceit. So why are you continuing to believe in them? Like we need to hold their feet to the fire and make them answer for these things. They're taking our tax dollars. They're taking our money and they're in turn giving us shite i'm done with it i'm tired of it i want them to be defunded i want them to go away they don't deserve one cent i hope you agree with me thank you